Hey everyone, welcome. I'm Derek with Flux and today we've got a really special video for you. I've been planning this for a while and wanted to do something, uh, you know, a little special for the new year, kick things off. We're going to start with a big pot today. So I'm going to throw, I'm hoping for a 30 inch pot. It might be a little bit bigger, but we're going to shoot for at least 30 inches. I like to be able to bisque fire these in the electric kiln and I have about 30 inches of clearance. So I hope we make it. Um, I'm gonna start with um, a good solid base and when we do a sectional piece, we're gonna take the next piece and stack it upside down on the next one, keep building up, give it shape, form, and uh, it's a lot of fun. It uses a lot of clay. I think we're probably gonna use, well, it's gonna be close to 70 pounds today, wet clay. So anyway, hope you guys enjoy. Be sure to subscribe so we can keep bringing you these videos and uh, we'll see you on the other side. All right, guys, here we go. This is, uh, this is our first chunk, 12 pounds. This is gonna be our base. It's gonna be a little bit thicker. Uh, we want it to have a little bit more stability. The form I'm going to make is gonna kind of um, taper outward and get wider as it gets taller. So, you know, when this piece is finished, you wanna think about how stable it is and you don't want it to tip over, right? You don't want it to be knocked over easily. We're shooting for about 30 inches. It might be a little bit taller, but not by much. So I'm not gonna be talking too much throughout this. I will kind of explain what I'm doing as I'm doing it, but for the most part, this is just a throwing video. So here we go. So as I open this, I am going to go a little bit thinner on the bottom because as it's going to be so tall, tall I'm not going to have <clears throat> an opportunity to flip this over and trim a foot into it. Really, I'm only gonna be able to give it kind of a side profile foot. So a little bit thinner on the base here, for sure. I'm still going to use my favorite green rib, you guys remember this one, to compress the bottom. And also, if you remember from earlier videos, the nice 90 degree corner we like to make where the wall meets the foot. Okay, that's really important. Okay, that's set, we're centered, open. Let's come on up, and as I come up, this is gonna kinda just gently V-shape outward as it comes up. <clears throat> and as I throw these larger chunks of clay, I'm not really getting my fingers in here, right? You're gonna see I'm gonna get my whole hand, and I'm just gonna lean into this with my wrist. Little bits at a time right now. I don't want to thin this out too much. These walls need to be much thicker as I attach these sections together. So I want it to be consistent, but I want it to be consistently thick. Okay, I like that shape. Let's check the thickness of the wall here. There's a little bit more at the bottom. Let's take a little bit more. Okay, now let's just clean this line up a little bit. Favorite green rib. That's a good starting place, guys. Okay, so let's flatten this top off. Now when I go to, so we're gonna have to dry this a little bit before we add our next piece, and I'm gonna move over to another wheel to throw the next section. But just kind of prepping this. 
So when we're ready for the next section, the first thing I'm gonna do, favorite green rib, I'm gonna flatten this top. You see this? And I'm just flattening that down real nice. Okay. Just flatten that off really good. <clears throat> Some people like to make a groove. Some people like to make a, a gallery, almost like a lid, how they fit them together. You can do whatever you like and whatever seems to work for you. I do, I do like to do the flat buttress joint. As long as you keep this plenty thick, you're gonna be just fine. Okay, nice and clean, nice and flat, good and thick. That's a good spot for our first chunk. Okay, let's move to the other wheel and throw the next piece. All right, real quick, before we throw the next piece, I just wanted to give you a top view and show you how flat this is and show you, uh, this is how I make the nice grooves and score it. I got a nice uh, silver fork. I think I picked this up from the Golden Corral some years ago. <laughs> but anyway, just give it a good spin and you can use anything you want, a serrated rib, a needle, but I just kind of like this because they get the grooves get nice and deep and I can just come in here and just chunk this up really good. We want that to bite together really good. You see all that? All right, let's take a quick measurement, guys. Got my calipers here, and for right now, they are big enough. This is the big set, but as this thing gets wider, we might have to use a yardstick or some other primitive form of measuring. But for right now, you see where I'm taking that? I actually wanna go, man, as close to the edge and maybe an eighth of an inch beyond. That's the measurement I want. Okay, check. Onto the next wheel. All right, guys, here we go. Piece number two, I'm gonna back up just a little bit. Again, this is 12 pounds. I didn't really talk about what clay I'm using. So here in the studio, we use uh, three or four types of clay. And instead of having to clean the pug mill every time to keep them all pure, we just blend everything together. So this is a mix of three stonewares. So it's really fun to throw, it's very strong. And you kind of need something pretty strong to throw these taller, bigger pieces. So again, second chunk, 12 pounds, here we go. good and centered let's open this up now the only thing different I'm gonna do here with this piece I am going to open this all the way to the wheel head because the process goes as we throw the next piece this is gonna get flipped over on top of the previous piece okay so I don't want to have to mess with having to needle that out of there or leaving anything there that I have to cut out as we add it on so all the way down And this can make it a little more challenging as you open this up. Wait, just be careful and you'll be just fine. She wants to come say hello. Ripley's our studio guard dog. All right, let's clean this edge up a little bit. And this is still pretty thick and that gives me some flexibility as far as the shape and moving this around once I get it on top of the base here. So I'm just cleaning this edge nice and straight. And then again, flatten this top where these pieces are gonna meet. Okay, let's check our size one more time. It's a little bit wider, that's okay. We're gonna leave it. Let's 
good to have it a little bit over because then I can use that extra clay to blend it in and bring it together. Okay, and then don't forget our fork. Give this a good deep groove, a nice scoring. Good. Okay, now the next thing we gotta do is dry these a little bit. All right guys, we got the propane torch out, just a little safety. Please be careful when messing with fire. I have a lot of experience with industrial gases and torches and a lot of that kind of stuff, but you know, this propane inside can be very dangerous. So just make sure it's well ventilated, you've got the proper protective equipment and you're being wise about this, okay? So let's spark this up. pretty good. I don't want to go too far on this guy. This is pretty thick. This is the base. I'm not too worried about this one collapsing. So we'll move on to the next one. All right, next piece. The other thing you want to be careful of is you don't melt your nice plastic splash pan because they're quite expensive. <laughs> so sometimes you might want to just take those out if you're messing with the fire. Also, this is on a plastic bat, so you will want to be careful of that as well. Here we go. to take my rib and kind of blend this together one time. I might just give it a flat pass because we were a little under. Okay, that's pretty good. I think one more pass. All right, I think we're getting somewhere. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit on top again. Be sure to leave this thick, guys. And then I'm gonna torch this one more time. And then uh, we're gonna carry on.
right guys, here we go. I think this is gonna be the last piece. I don't wanna go much taller. I wanna be able to um, stay under 30 inches. It's gonna be close, but uh, yeah, here we go. Oh, this piece, and then we are going to do, have to do a neck. I don't think I can get the neck out of this next piece. So, a little water, a little mud. really start to see it come to life and that's always the exciting part. I'm going to pull some of this thickness down again because I don't need all this. And let's go ahead and pull some of this off while we're here. Okay, blend this down. together pretty good. Kind of bulges out a little bit right here, but I can trim that right in. I was trying to push it in, but I didn't want to deflect too much on the lower portion. So we can just kind of trim that in and bring that in a little nicer.
right, guys, we've made it pretty far. It's looking pretty good. Um, I'm gonna put one more piece on here, kind of bring this up to a close, and then maybe just a real simple, short, flared out neck on here. Um, this has been a lot of fun. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this. So uh, we're almost done. <laughs> Right, guys we are done I think it came out pretty well that's the quickest I've done something like this before but I'm pretty happy with it I, I might still do a little bit more I think I might want to raise the lip up a little bit more I'm out of clay I didn't want it to get any thinner here but I would like the neck a little bit taller just to kind of set it off from the rest of the pot but uh, that's kind of how I do big pots and um, still learning still getting better at them still have some failures on them Still trying to find the right type of clay that um, you know doesn't crack and fail when we fire these to cone ten. So that that's been a bit of a problem. But other than that, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to subscribe and uh, let me know what you guys think. Have a good one.